This content is for educational purposes only. What you do with this information is at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. I'm sorry I haven't posted in a while. I was out of town and I saw all the updates happening while I was away and I did not have any of my resources, my computer, my switch, nothing like that. So I had to just wait till I got back. But of course, I'm always late and well, better late than never. Today's video, we're going to be updating the latest Atmosphere and Hecate, which is Atmosphere 1.9.1 and Hecate 6.3.1, in which they support the latest Switch Promo, which is right now 20.1.1. Everything seems to be working just fine on my end. And with that being said, let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so the first thing that we could do is download the files that we need for today. So if you look in the description, there's going to be several links. And one of them should say the other side, AMS 1.9.1, click here, something like that. But once you click on that link, it should take you to my GitHub page. And here, all you need to do is just scroll to this assets tab, click on this to start the download process, and then have it move to the desktop like I have done already. The next link in the description will be for the Hecate 6.3.1, the other side, and it should take you to this page of my GitHub. And the same thing, just go to the assets tab, click on this link here, and move them to the desktop. The third option, which I am not going to show on this video, just because I don't want to confuse anybody, but those of you that know about the my AIO Switch Updater app that lets you update all your files through Wi-Fi on your Switch is already updated and working just fine. I will have a link in the description in case you know how to use that already. But of course, if you don't and you would like to know how to, you can uh, leave a comment down below and then I can make an update video with the AIO Switch Updater app. But if you want it, I'll have a link in the description as well. But once we download those two zip files, we can now open up our SD card. And it doesn't matter how you open up your SD card as long as you're able to transfer your files successfully, because that's the most common issue when updating CFW is the transferring of new files over to the SD card. So with that, I have my SD card open with the Hecate SD card tools, never have any issues with transferring new files over. So I recommend it if you can use it. But once you have the SD card open, I like to edit the SD card by deleting the atmosphere folder and the bootloader folder. And I know a lot of people don't like doing that, but it minimizes a lot of issues when updating CFW. And inside the atmosphere folder, which is the most important one for CFW, there's folders like the contents folder that has like cheats or sys modules that people may use like mission control or sys tweak and they might not be compatible with the latest switch firmware of the time. So I like to get rid of the atmosphere folder because we're going to add new files into it and then you can go and find the new uh, sys modules, mission control, Tesla, anything like that and add them to that. But if you want to save your information, maybe you have some cheats inside the contents folder, you have some configuration files in the config folder, you can go ahead and take them out before you delete them. So just wanted to let you know before we do that, same thing with the bootloader folder. If you have specific files that you care about, if you always use my CFW packs, you don't have to worry about it. I always update my files and it's okay to delete the entire bootloader folder. So just letting you know before you delete these files. So with that being said, let's go ahead and delete the atmosphere folder and the bootloader folder. There we go. And now that we have deleted those, our SD card is ready. The other files that are going to transfer over, it's going to tell you that you have the same files with the same name. It's okay to replace those files with new ones because they're not as important uh, as this actual CFW to boot in and make sure things work just fine. So. With that, now let's navigate to the two zip files that we downloaded for today. And we can start with the other side, AMS 1.9.0. Now this is another thing that I recommend using. I am going to be extracting my files using 7-zip. I never have any issues with it. And if you want to follow along with me, I'll have a download link in 7-zip that you can install on your PC as well. So when I right click, I'm going to be using 7-zip and I'm going to click on open archive. Here we have the updated files of uh, the CFW for Atmosphere 1.9.1. And I'm gonna extract over. 
And here it says I have the same uh, files with the same names. Just go ahead and replace the files with the destination. And we're going to do the same thing with the Hecate files as well. Right click, 7-zip, open archive, and then highlight these two uh, folders and files and extract them to the root of the SD card. Make sure it's the root of the SD card. That way um, it doesn't transfer into any folders and have any issues that way as well. So I'm going to replace the files of destination and that's pretty much it. We should be now updated with the latest CFW, Atmosphere and Hecate, which uh, before we test it out, I would just like to mention that my CFWs are very basic. There's nothing filled with extra stuff. I guess you can say that that's bloat uh, stuff. I know a lot of people like having a full setup of CFW, but I like to have the most minimal issues as possible. And then if you uh, want to add your own files or sys modules or things, you can go ahead and do that. And just in case, because I don't know why when I add a lot of files to my packs, it works for some, it doesn't work for all. So just having it as minimal as possible, uh, that's what I did here. Also, I'm not adding my Tesla menu. I don't know if a lot of people have issues with my Tesla menu. So I did not add it this time and you can go ahead and use, I'm assuming ultra hand that does kind of the same thing. I did provide my overlays for my uh, quick reboot app. I also added them into the switch folder as well. So you should be having those files. This is not what it looks like. This is my actual SD card, but I did add uh, the quick reboot in a row and the overlay files uh, just in case you use a Tesla again or ultra hand. But that's pretty much it. Uh, this time I did not add the protection using the Exosphere. I did add the host files that allow you to not access Nintendo Network and accidentally update again. But this time I did not use the Exosphere. It doesn't work for a lot of people either. So I don't know why it works for me, but not for others. But just letting you know. With that being said, we are done with our SD card. Let's go ahead and extract it and try it out on the Switch. Okay, so I know that it's blurry, but I want to give you an example of what you may be looking at when you inject into Hecate. After updating your CFW, you should see up here Hecate 6.3.1. And all you need to do next is go into the launch options, if I can poke it. And here we have several launch options. The first one is for OFW, and it will not have any um, CFW on it and this is usually where people play online with which I don't recommend at all but I added the option there the second and third option is with the fusey bin option and the last two options are with the newest update with Hecate which is for package 3 so Hecate changed their uh, their file setup it doesn't use the, use the FSSO option no more which is pretty much the same thing and now it just says on the line package three. So I went ahead and updated that in my Hecate INI file. And the reason why I have four different options for CFW is because the same thing, I don't know why when people use Fusey bin file uh, as an option to launch, it works and for some it doesn't and vice versa. For some reason it works with the package three and does not work with the Fusey bin. So I went ahead and added all of the options just in case. But for me, it works just fine with the CFW with using the Fusey.bin. And if you have EMU MMC, make sure that it's activated and you can use the EMU MMC option. I'm going to go ahead and pick the CFW um, SysNand and boot into it. Okay, so if you were able to boot into your switch with no issues, which I hope not, then you should be good to go. You can also check to see if you are updated on your CFW by going into system settings, then scrolling all the way down to system. And then right under system update, you can see that I'm on the latest switch firmware, which is right now 20.1.1 using the latest atmosphere 1.9.1. And I have an S. And in case you don't know about the letters, I have an S because I'm using my CFW on regular SysNand. If you have an E, that's because you're using yours with EMU MMC, but it works for both. So just letting you know the context of those letters, but that's pretty much it. You should be good to go. The next test that I like to do just to make sure that my packs work is 
check to see if any of the forwarders work. So I have a custom HB menu folder of uh, the channel. And if this works, then for sure everything works, if you know what I mean. So it's working just fine for me. And if you're interested in this in this, uh, HB menu, you can leave a comment down below and maybe I can help you out. But uh, in, now that we're inside here, you can see that I have the quick reboot and the reboot to payload. I did add the Hec8 bin file into atmosphere folder. So that way those of you that have the OG switch or the V2, you can go into reboot to payload and get back into Hec8 after you use reboot to payload. Those of you that have Mariko devices uh, and use the mod chip, I have added this quick reboot that I have made and you can do the same thing, which works just like the reboot to payload. And once you use this option, it will take you back. So now that we're done here, we can go ahead and test this out. Those of you that have Tesla would be able to see my quick reboot um, option in the Tesla menu and you can use it there. But once you're in quick reboot, if you have a Mirko device or any other device, it'll work the same way. You can just push minus and it should take you back into Hecate. There we go. Since I never did the NYX, well, now you get to see that that's what it looks like. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope everything is working for you. And of course, if it doesn't work, you can leave a comment down below and I can try and help you out as best as I can. But other than that, let me know if it does work for you. And of course, I'm always late, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, I appreciate those of you that uh, support the channel and that wait for me. And I'm always usually late. And when I'm early, then they throw another update. So they're waiting. <laughs> Those of you that know, they're waiting for me to post so that way they can release the, a new atmosphere and a new Switch firmware. But if you're able to use this one, it's working just fine. And let me know if it does. But thanks for everybody that waits and watches and supports. I appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching again. And I'll see you on the next one.